Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So one of the most common things that I'm seeing in my comment section is a lot of people asking about what gear do I use? What computer do I use? The ins and outs of what you should get if you are looking into buying a good computer, laptop for editing, for doing a lot of the things that I show you in my tutorials. So today, what we're going to do is we're not going to do a full gear review. We'll do that in the future, but we are going to give a review on this awesome editing laptop. Um, I also want to add a lot of educational tips into this. So even if you don't go for this specific laptop, you still come away from this video with a lot of educational knowledge in terms of what a graphics card can do to accelerate your creative apps, whether it's just how they work normally, rendering. We'll also talk about things you should be looking for if you are looking for an editing laptop, um, what kind of specs and all the in-betweens for that. So today our test subject for this video is going to be this awesome Concept D7. We're going to be reviewing this. The great people over at Nvidia actually hooked me up with this, so shout out to them. This is one 100% my genuine reaction to this as well. A little bit of backstory, I've used Nvidia GPUs for like six, seven years. Ever since I got my very first computer, I have a RTX 2080 in my main PC. This has an RTX 2060. I've always loved Nvidia GPUs. I've always been behind what they can do in terms of GPU acceleration. So there's a lot of cool stuff that is in this laptop. And I'm excited to share that with you guys. And just to give you guys a rough idea of what I'm saying when I mean editing beast, I'm talking being able to edit 8K red clips without any proxy files. A lot of new things which are in the RTX which are specifically designed for helping boost a lot of these content creator apps like Premiere, After Effects, C4D, Lightroom, even DaVinci Resolve for those color grading people. All the links that are relating to everything I'll be saying in this video will of course be down in the description and we're going to give a full comprehensive review on this awesome editing laptop. I was actually on a plane a few days ago just working on 3D stuff. Being able to create on the go and actually have something that's small, compact, and you can take with you, open up anywhere is super essential for a lot of you guys out there creating videos. So at first glance, what I really love about this is first off, the screen is just absolutely beautiful. They use Adobe be RGB so everything is going to be color correct when it comes to editing which is great you'll really notice that this laptop specifically was created with content creating in mind not only that but you can run some pretty power intensive games on this go to the ins and outs later when it comes to the graphics card CPU um, other than that the keys light up whenever you use them which is great for if you're working in the dark like I said I was on a plane a few days ago working on 3d stuff having these light up keys is just a small thing that does help a lot in terms of the overall design of it very modern very sleek um, a big issue before with laptops is they were too big or too small. I feel like this is a very good in-between size. You have a nice, clean, modern design, nice size. You can pick it up. It's not heavy. You're not walking around with this crazy giant block. Not only that, but another issue that used to come along with bigger laptops or stronger laptops is the battery power would really be lacking with that. That would kind of be the downside of it. With this, they've been using some modern technology to fix that problem. The battery life is great so far. So with this battery life, they have something called Optimus Tech, which basically optimizes the laptop to either give you the best performance or the best battery life possible. So it's always changing using AI, depending on what you are doing to optimize the battery life, optimize the performance and give you the best overall experience. You don't have to worry about this thing shutting down while you're working on an important project. You get a good amount of battery life out of this. Um, like I said, the screen is beautiful. 4K display on that, if I didn't mention it before. In terms of the peripherals, you get a bunch of USB slots, which is always perfect for connecting things like this, like this graphics tablet, if you wanna do some animation or other things. If you wanna connect things like audio adapters, you have that. It also comes with an HDMI port, which is great if you wanna connect this to a bigger screen. So say you're going into an editing bay, you're bringing your laptop that has all your work, you can set up there, connect to the screen, work there, pack up your stuff whenever you're done, and then take this laptop home with all your projects on it. Now, the only downside I would say to the hardware of the laptop is the speakers are a little bit soft, but most people have headphones with them, and they have you covered with audio jacks, of course, so just connect headphones, and you'll be good to go. So in all, in terms of design, this is great for people that are making music videos, corporate videos, people that need to have their work, but travel a lot, be on their feet a lot, but still need that editing power that can pack a punch on the back end. In terms of your graphics card, in terms of your CPU. So now let's hop into the behind the scenes. What really makes this laptop powerful? So you're working with an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2060. The main difference between the RTX and the GTX series, RTX really works with ray tracing, which gives you that photorealistic look. It gives you those improved shadows behind everything, which is amazing for 3D rendering. i7, great
great CPU. I'm gonna do some benchmarks later on and show you some stats. You'll get 16 gigabytes of RAM in here, which is great for the average user in terms of 3D After Effects. 16 gigs is gonna do you fine. Now let's go into more of the details for some of the overview things I talked about before. I mentioned AK Red Clips. We're gonna hop into Adobe Premiere. I have some raw Red Clips. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use this. There's been a lot of issues with Red Clips working within Premiere, working on laptops and on PCs before. It's very non-compatible. This does a great job at filling that gap. So we're gonna hop in Premiere. I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you some other things in terms of the acceleration behind it and what you can do. So let's go ahead and fire up Adobe Premiere. You'll be able to see what this acceleration can do in terms of rendering. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do once you do open Premiere or After Effects, when you do create your project, is you're going to want to make sure that it's using that CUDA core GPU acceleration. So let's go ahead and just create a new project and here you'll be able to see your renderer. So this Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration CUDA. Make sure you're selecting that so that you can get the benefits of the GPU in there. We're gonna go ahead and create our normal sequence here. And I'm going to open up one of these little um, HD 1080p, 24 frames per second. Um, RE presets. Now I actually downloaded some free AK red footage off of this free website. I'll leave a link below. Shout out to them. The name of the site I got it from is Raw Film. So if you're looking for that, if you want to experiment, go ahead and grab some of those clips. Let's go ahead and drag some of these red 8K helium clips into our project. And like I said, these aren't the 1080p proxy files that a lot of people are used to working with with RED. These are the AK raw files. And by first review, just dropping in like it's a normal clip, Easy as that, keep existing settings, and 8K so it's insanely scaled in. Let's go ahead and just scale that to frame size. Playback looks smooth, and this is at half resolution too. I didn't even put it at fourth resolution. So that really shows the optimization that you can do. Let's put it on full and see how it runs with that, which is the true test. And even at full, it's only one clip in the project, but the fact that this can play back a full red clip at full resolution is just testament to what you can really do with this. So really great. I'm gonna go ahead and make a duplication of this, and then I'm going to bring this into After Effects with a replace with After Effects composition, and then we'll test it out with an After Effects still using that CUDA. So just a little bit more information as to what you really get in the background, the actual technical details. So in this RTX card, you get tensor cores, which is great for things like scaling. It's really optimized for things like Adobe Lightroom, even DaVinci Resolve, which is great. I'm actually filming this right now on the Blackmagic Earth a mini pro so i'm excited to be able to see how it runs with that and the color grading process with my clips on the um, black magic which is great and with the red so this is very tailored towards high production people that are working they really need that extra step they really need something that isn't going to slow them down whenever they're creating these projects so we're going to go over to file project settings once you get into your project settings, make sure that your CUDA is enabled so that you can start using that GPU acceleration. You can also go over to edit and you can go over to preferences and then previews. And then within previews, you guys can click GPU information here and then make sure ray tracing is set to GPU so that you can use that ray tracing power that I've been talking about for that realistic 3D shadows. Now, in terms of applications for what you can create with this technology and what this really is gonna help you with, some of the tutorials I've shown in my channels, things like using Element 3D, that uses ray tracing for a lot of their shadows. So you can definitely benefit with Element 3D. In terms of 3D in general, all these C4D tutorials I've been talking about recently, using Cinema 4D and, and the Octane renderer, Octane uses GPU power to render things out. It's a GPU based render engine. So for those of you C4D Octane users, you're going to get a big benefit from GPU acceleration as well. For those of you that are serious about this, maybe you're working for production companies, maybe you're doing big music videos, maybe you're just like it, maybe you just like everything I've been talking about and you want to get your hands on something like this, check it out. Links down in the description. We're going to show you guys one more thing just to wrap this whole video up. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on my display here and just open up our Nvidia control panel. One of the great things about NVIDIA as a whole and why I've loved their graphics cards for so long, you get this easy to use control panel. Not only that, but you have NVIDIA studio ready graphics drivers, which are really optimized for content creators, like I've been saying. I recommend that you download this NVIDIA GeForce Experience app. Basically what this does is it just optimizes your games for you. Um, in terms of like recording, you get these nice little overlays. It's great for live streaming. I use that on my main PC as well. You can automatically update your drivers through here as well. So keep that in mind. If you do pick this up and you wanna do your own um, benchmarks, I'm gonna do it as well here. So let's search for our device manager here. 
and then we'll open that up. And then in terms of benchmarks, what you can do if you want to test the CPU, you can head over to your display adapters. You can disable the GeForce 2060 if you want to test out the Intel itself. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to disable the GPU and we're going to go back to our project settings. I'm going to switch it back to just our CPU rendering. We're going to render out that red clip just with our CPU, give you a quick speed test. Then we're going to switch back on the GPU, switch it back to our CUDA, and we'll show you the difference with the GPU acceleration. I also want to give some quick insight into what NVIDIA Studio really is. I know I use the hashtag within this video and in the title. So what's special about NVIDIA Studio is that they're working with all these different software companies, all these different equipment manufacturers that are creating these different types of technology. And they're really focusing on making sure that what's going into the laptop is specifically tailored for what you guys are creating. So all of the software you guys are using for a daily basis, they're taking that into account the best possible tool that allows you to create in the easiest way. Um, I hope that this does just give you a good insight into what a great editing laptop can do for you. Another thing that I wanted to get across with this video isn't just showing the laptop. I really just wanted to educate you guys on the in-between. So if you are planning on getting a laptop, it doesn't have to be the top of the line, but know exactly what you're going into. Know the benefits that you can take away from something like this that you can apply to your next purchase for a laptop if you are interested in that or a PC. Things like GPU acceleration are huge in terms of just making your life easier. So think about that guys i hope that you did enjoy a review video like this very different from what i'm doing and right there my camera died so back to my floating head look just want to say guys if you're interested in anything in this video all relevant links will be down below just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching thank you guys so much for supporting and i'll see you guys in the next one